Ladies and gentlemen, techno lovers, welcome, welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the show. Um, this week has been um, an absolutely fantastic week again for um, getting hold of amazing uh, artists and chatting with them. I just think it's really uh, great that I, I get to chat to um, people that um, share such a love for techno music as I do. And, um, and then I can obviously... Um, uh, pass that on to you guys and I really hope you're enjoying uh, what it is we're doing here uh, if uh, you're new to the channel please if you're watching YouTube please do me a favor subscribe to the channel um, and hit the like it just allows the alg algorithm to do its thing and uh, pass the information and the and the content on to more people who can then enjoy it um, I really do appreciate all of your support and uh, DMs and everything that you're doing and keep those uh, suggestions coming for people that you want me to talk to. Um, if you... Um if you have a suggestion of somebody that you um, you would like me to interview, just put it down in the comments and um, let's see if we can get that going. Remember, this is a community-led um, project uh, for you. It's not for me, it's for you. And um, we want to give something back to the community because we love you guys and um, you know, you're know the reason why we do what we do. So um, keep, yeah, keep those suggestions coming. So uh, without further ado, today is a brilliant day because I get to talk to a very close friend of mine who I love very very much and has um, been in the background of techno for a long time and has been doing amazing things for the scene. Um, she's a, an amazing DJ on her own right, she's an amazing pro promoter in her own right, uh, she's promoted um, some absolutely fantastic parties, parties I will never forget. Um, and uh, she is uh, single-handedly, well, not single-handedly, but she has been uh, uh, the driving force behind um, creating uh, one of the biggest underground techno brands there is right now um, at a family level, at an underground level. Um, and it's just a pleasure to have her on the show. Um, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Michaela Collide. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing all right, you know. I'm doing all right. But um, thanks for joining me, mate, because I know you've got to go back to work in a bit, haven't you? Which... I have. I have indeed, yeah. Oh, everybody, Night... can you get your violins out for, for Michaela? Because she's got to go back to work. and she Night went... shift. Flipped. Night shift as well. <laughs> Four nights right. in a row. You'd think no, um, us DJs would be used to night shifts, but alas, no. No, not my age. Anyone gets used to night shift, do they? <laughs> No, it's all right. It's not too bad. I don't mind it. I hate the early shifts, but no, night shift's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll yeah. do it. Again, not, 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 uh, we're not morning people, us producers. <laughs> so, um, first things first, um, I know there are plenty of people that watch the podcast that already know who you are and what you do. But for those of you who are living under a rock, uh, Michaela's going to tell you who she is, what she does, what she's all about. Go ahead, Michaela. Oh, right, okay. I feel like I've got a bit of imposter syndrome here. <laughs> Never. <laughs> no, Never. no. All right, so, yeah, so I'm Michaela. Um, I run Collide, um, which um, I've been running for about seven years. I like to say long seven time. years. Seven, yeah. seven, seven years, yeah. And um, yeah, also uh, I just promote the event and I also DJ as well. Um, and um yeah i don't really know what else there is to say <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I don't, right, I don't well, i'll tell you what i'm gonna jump in and i'm gonna tell you about michaela then because <laughs> when i was um when i first moved to the west midlands which was almost a decade ago now um it was one of those transitional periods for me where i'd had all the contacts in in london um and i was building a fairly good kind of um base level relationship with people in the london area uh whether it be venues promoters um you know artists whatever um you know uh had lots of um I had lots of friends in, in techno, acid techno, all over. And uh, then I moved to the Midlands and I was like, right, what's going on in the Midlands? And I absolutely really did not know where to look in terms of, um, you know, what kind of promotions were out there and, and, and whether I should even be kind of pursuing those kind of relationships. And um, naturally for me, I gravitated to um, the events that were putting on more of a kind of a harder stance 
And at the time, I was just transitioning out of my project before, which was Masinki. I don't know if any of you remember that, but that was um, that was more the kind of business techno, I suppose you call it. Um, and I was transitioning into a, um, a, a, a period in my life where I wanted to look for uh, hard techno produ uh, sort of productions and hard techno events that I could, uh, you know, build relationships and all the rest of it. And Michaela and I, how did we meet Michaela? I can't even remember, but it was something to do with um, a live feed or um, there was some there was some stuff going on online and I think I ended up getting involved uh, and the next thing I know I've done a, a live feed for this um, this is this this promotion which I had heard about but I wasn't really sure um, you know just how much of a standing they had in the in the community within the midlands until i started getting involved with them but the next thing i did i did a promo i did a live feed and the next thing i've got michaela at my door with goodies giving me presents <laughs> and this is the kind of person we're dealing with here and she's um uh. she's since been um a very close friend of mine and we're um you know and i, I um I, in terms of uh, the collide the feel of the collide collective i feel like um, what Michaela does for the uh, for her, the individual artist, she then uh, extends to uh, Collide. And if you ever go to a Collide event, you'll know what I'm talking about. We're talking old school vibes, man. Um, and it's not something that you you can really pretend to do. It's not something you can you can force. It happens because of the way that it's put together, the people around it, the people that attend it, and um, this is what I love about the Collide experience. So transitioning on from that, Mick, what um, what was it that kind of got you motivated to actually uh, pursue that kind of avenue? Because that it takes a, a lot of work to start with, but now you've got this role into a point where people come because it's a family vibe, not because it's a techno event. Um, so I used to run an event, um, I probably, I guess the, sort of the, the way that I got into running events was um, I I started DJing out. I've been DJing in bedrooms and house parties and my friends' parties for years since my twenties. Like, um, never really had the confidence to play out. And good friends of mine, Maria and Rune, used to run a night called Osmosis, which was one of the biggest nights underground, yeah, the biggest know, nights in Rune Birmingham. Yeah, so. Um, and Maria kept hassling me to come and play at the event and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going to do it, can't do it, I'm not, I'm not confident enough. And um, in the end, she just put me on the flyer. <laughs> and if you know Maria, <laughs> you'll know that she goes, she's fucking me very, uh, very persuasive. <laughs> but she just put me on the flyer. And after that first event, I, I she made me resident. So I was um, mm -hmm. then playing out. But not long after that happened, they decided they weren't going to do osmosis anymore. By then, I'd already had the taste for um, for playing out and stuff. And I remember one thing that really stuck in my mind was I was asked to play at another event in Birmingham, and I put my heart and soul into it. It was the first time I'd ever played anywhere outside of Osmosis. Um, I put loads of months of work into it, you know, to make this set good. Um, I played. There was loads of people on the dance floor. Everybody was loving it, and the DJ who played after me just as we were sort of doing the transition to take over, he just whispered in my ear, you do realize you only got this set because you're eye candy. And I, it was just like, boom. What a knobhead. Exactly, I was like, you <laughs> fucking dickhead. And I was knobhead. so upset about it. Yeah. Um, I spent the whole night- Shame on set. you, whoever you are. Yeah, shame on you. Don't darken my door. But do you know what? I'm, 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 I'm actually grateful because it gave me yeah. the real spur on to think, do you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to prove you yeah. wrong. Um, and um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go try and make this, you know, as successful as I can. And it was not long after that I started doing events with, um, with an ex-partner of mine, which were really successful, but we only did them for a couple of years. Mm. Um, and then we sort of we we sort of went our separate ways and whatever. And um, I carried on doing gigs, but not promoting events. And then me and my friend Rachel, who is the co-founder of Collide, yep. um, were sitting around my dining room table one day having a bottle of wine, as you do. 
And we were sitting there till then. Now, this is a story. This is the story of how we love stories started. on this podcast. There's no big, like, massive, like, uh, amazing story here. It's actually quite amusing, and only a few people know this. So we were both sitting, drinking a bottle of wine, discussing which two guys that we fancied, right? Yeah. And these these two guys both happened to be DJs. Right. Right. <laughs> so we were discussing, oh, yeah, I like this one, I like that. And we were like, I, I was like, I know, why don't we just put on our own night and invite them to come and play? <laughs> <laughs> So you fished them in. <laughs> yeah, so Rachel's like, fishing. okay, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. So we're all a bit like drunk and talk. Well, the next day, I'd gone and I went and booked Suki Tensi, which was our first event. Booked it. It was only supposed to be a little party for us and our friends, you know, nothing big. Booking these two guys that we really liked to come and play. And um, we didn't have a name. We were like, what should we call it? And uh, Rachel came up with the name Collide. Um, so we decided at that point, because there's a lot of, um, tell me one of the better word, techno snobbery that happens, particularly in Birmingham, where people Still are very, v- yeah, very, very <laughs> genre specific, sub genre specific, they will yeah. only do purist techno, they will only do this techno, they will only do that techno. And we thought, well, how about bringing it all together? It's probably not going to work. You're not going to get a crowd in. Bringing all the tech, bring even techno that we don't even particularly like that much, but it's not all about us. Let's do it where we can have this whole thing where people just come together and just have a party. Um, and um, that's that's where we, we decided to go down. So we did our first party. Ironically, the two guys that we booked both didn't turn up. <laughs> Right. <laughs> which was hilarious uh, and because by that time we weren't really bothered about that anyway but the the first party was a massive success um and it just kind of rolled from there and we just stuck with the formula we were faced all along the way with um you know people just like no that's not serious enough for us no that's not techno enough for us no that's not that enough for us but we didn't care we stuck with that formula and um here we are today seven years later really successful and i think because we've 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 stuck with that and we haven't diverted from that and even i've booked artists that i that it's not particularly my sort of thing that i would listen to but i know that people like them so they can come and, and enjoy the party and that's kind of where it where it yeah. started and where it's to where it is now yeah and it's where you met your lovely husband paul uh, yes Paulio. <laughs> good old it's paulio good. supposed to be yeah. on the podcast but he was um he, he's been very rude and he's gonna add to, he's had to work which is very he, rude i thought he's, he's working upstairs unfortunately yeah, exactly. yeah he um so i met um paul in a pub garden in chester um randomly very randomly yeah. and we just started talking about we both love techno and um we were, we were chatting and chatting and chatting and he sent me a mix um when he got home and like me and rachel and nina had all listened to it and we were like yeah this is brilliant let's book him let's book it's him proper techno the techno he plays as well yeah 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 so we were like yeah this is brilliant let's let's book him to come and play so we booked him to come and play on our first our first birthday um, and he came down from Chester with some of his crew, and there, yeah, the rest is history. Now we're married with a kid. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, just girls, just come and promote her. You can like book any. <laughs> so we're getting change your life, think, girls. <laughs> yeah, when you think about it, like what the original thing was of like booking those guys. So I'm glad they didn't turn up because yeah. yeah. So I met my husband there. So um, yeah, so that's how that happened. <laughs> So, so the thing about Collide for me is um, the thing that stands out is obviously I played a lot of um, different events by, run by lots of different people uh, for lots of different reasons. But the, the reason Collide stood out for me from the very, very beginning um, was that kind of sense of family um, and that sense of connection that you get. Um, and obviously, um, you know, you can't, dem- well, you can if you want to go down that route of demographicking, kind of like, uh, you know, checking, you, you know, you, what your wider demographic is and all the rest of it. But when you go to a Clyde event, um, I notice there's a lot of people, there's a majority of the people that go are kind of of our age. Um, and then you've got filtering down into the 20s and 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 everybody, there is there is not, there is no clashing in terms of people that are on the dance floor everyone's there to have a good time um 
and that's not always the case like if you go to certain places you'll find that there is a clear demographic of people that are a lot younger um people that are old, a lot older in in certain areas of music but how how have you managed to kind of get everyone together and that sense of family where you know i mean we're, guys we're talking about people wearing the merchandise like mm -hmm. constantly walking around with the merchandise getting involved in the in the social media campaigns and social media that happens um you know it uh, and then um you know feeling like you're in a room full of friends rather than a, an event ha so you know how how do you think that's happened um i think because i have got a really really wide circle of very supportive friends and from the start Clyde was just a, we were running out of people's houses to party in really yeah. they were getting too small so it was just having a bigger venue and those that core group of friends have been there since the start and they're still there and I think because what it's grown organically I can't really give you the reason of, of how it's grown like that but I'm always very very um conscious i get a lot of emails like day in day out of djs oh, i really want to come and play at your event i really want to come and play at event and i'm like have you been to the event yeah do you know what we're about do you know anybody you know or you just wanting to play at this event because you've seen the name on social media so i'm not interested in those type of people you know and it's as, as rude as that sounds i will book people to come and play who support the event and who come to the event and know what it's all about and the one thing that I noticed quite early on was DJs that we were booking to play. We've always booked DJs from all over the country, always. And DJs that we were booking to play, we were booking to play and they were coming and then partying for the next event. Mm. And I actually wanted to be part of it, part of it again. And it kind of grown grows like that, you see. Um, and then so people who, you know, I know how we met because I bought you I'd seen something of yours on Instagram and I'd bought one of your tunes and I said wow. I love this I love this tune right. and then you'd contacted me and then we sort of built up a friendship from there and then you did the live stream yeah. and I think as well the um sort of pre-lockdown we were still growing lockdown really was what what made us what we are now it was an incubator wasn't it yeah it really was and you know week in week out every single week throughout the whole of the lockdown period i did a live stream with a different artist i did the 12 hour live stream and it was bloody hard work and i had a baby at the time so it was really really hard work and building that community of people who who were getting involved in the live streams also people were getting involved in the live chats people were just talking to each other more so when we had that big event that happened um, the first one in 2021 after we'd all sort of come out of, we we're still in the bit of the fog of lockdown, but mm. we'd come out of it when we had that big event. Suddenly we'd gone from being an event of 120 people to filling a room of nearly 400. Mm. And these were people who'd just been involved in the sort of the, the live streams and the lockdown process and everything. So I definitely think that that period helped us build the community. Um, and I think the way it is now, because we have kept to those roots and we're not going to be, we're not ever going to have people quite often say, oh, you could go and get a 500 capacity venue. You could do this, you could do that. But I'm not interested. I want to keep it what it is. And that's the family um, and the, the people who come, they come time and time and time and time again. We we don't need to grow. We, we You know, the formula is not broken. We don't need to fix it. No. No, I totally agree with you, and I think the um, the, the like as you said, you, you're putting the the vibe and the and the feel of the party over your pocket, and I think um, obviously nobody goes into this game um, trying to lose money, um, uh, and there is a lot of money that um, that can potentially go down the toilet with promotion with anybody, <coughs> um, you know, whether you're a small uh, event or a, or an absolutely huge one, but um, you know. <laughs> To focus, to fixate on the profit, um, I think can be a promoter's disaster um, from the start. And I think it's, it, you know, if money if money comes as a result of it, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, I think that's half the battle, isn't it? I don't, I mean, for me, it's not, this is a hobby for me. This is not, this is yeah. not my life. Um, so I've never been money orientated with it. You know, I come from a free party background. I'm a bit too old to go into the woods now these days, you know, going on free parties, but that was, that's my roots. That's where I come from. And my circle of friends who, mm. my close circle who support and, and make this work of, of all of the same mentality. So we all put a bit of money in, make it happen. That's it. Well, you know, we, 
we break even that's it and, and that yeah. we're happy with that sometimes we might make a little loss you know it doesn't matter but it's never it's never ever and never ever will be about making money because that's not um that would be straying away from from why i do it and i think i would lose my passion and 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 um if, if it became just a focus of my whole life and it, you know i've got to do this event i've got to do this event to make money i've got to do this event to live i've got to do this event to yeah. make put food on my table no no it's um it's just a hobby it so just saps the fun out of it then doesn't it and just becomes it, another business it certainly does and i'm not i'm not business minded in the slightest sense um yeah. so I, it would be probably <laughs> full flat on his ass <laughs> oh that's awesome so so um going on to um going on to like djs and how you pick djs and and what you kind of look for you kind of you've touched on you know why the the kind of base level of what you would be looking for in a, in terms of a dj but if there was people if there are djs that are watching this that have, have literally they have got their heart and soul um you know firmly planted on on playing an, a collide event later on down the line what um what is it that you what 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 makes a, somebody stand out to you in terms of a DJ and kind of what they represent? Um, to be honest, like I uh, I I would like to have met the person at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I, I I have been. I've, I'm not going to go into um, details and name names and stuff, but I've met certain people, right? Mostly men, because I'm a woman. They don't know who I am. They're fucking rude to me, and then the yeah. next thing they're in me in box asking for for a set. It's just not going to happen. No. You know, it pays a lot to be nice, but you know, I like to have met someone or know what they're about. I'd like them to have at least maybe shown a bit of an interest in Clyde. Not even necessarily attended an event. You know, maybe involved in the socials or you know gets 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 what it's about because like you say it's not just a commercial party it, it's a it's a community and there has been people who i've booked that have maybe not um fitted into the vibe or or, or bought some bad energy with them and yeah. it just doesn't work it's they've got to be able to understand they've got to have that mentality about them um it, it, it's 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 a difficult one because when you're getting sent like 20 30 40 mixes a week like i don't i don't have time to listen to them all i really don't um and um it, sometimes people will get a bit arsy about the fact oh you're not listening to my mix like, yeah. oh, I just don't, you know i just don't have time so it's really difficult in that sense but i think just like approaching it on a personal level or talking like i didn't know you before you know you came you did a live stream for us for, for no reason other than you know i said i liked your tune you know mm. that's the sort of thing that you want that's all you need it? to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but you know it, it's a bit of this it, it, it's a difficult environment now with promoting and djing and i don't want to ever say to a dj you have to promote this event in order to play at the event because that's not what's about a dj is wow. a dj a promoter is a promoter i do both and it's bloody hard um, to to be able to do both, but I think showing an interest in the event that you're if if you if I listen to your mix and so I've, I've run competitions, um, for example, last year we run a competition for the summer gathering, and I just said to people, send in a twenty minute mix. Now you can't really gauge a lot from a Four twenty tracks, minute mix. Five tracks, yeah, yeah, but that's all I had the time to listen to. But I can listen to that mix and I could know, know instantly whether they're going to fit in with Collide, whether they're going to fit in with the Collide sound for, for first or whether they're, they're going to bring something to the party. And the young guy that won, um, Jamie Scanlon and Charlie Kilowatt, his mix was literally just what I imagined in my head would be playing at the first summer gathering. It was absolutely brilliant. And then I'll play it to the other people and think, what do you think? And they're all like, yeah, this is pretty good. Imagine myself in a field with a pina colada listening to this, you know. Well, not quite believe pina colada, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And um, I would definitely kept... be drinking a pina colada. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a pina colada. No, I love a pina colada. It's got to have fruit <laughs> in it, though. It's got, it's got to be a fancy one. Um, but he came and he, he bought everything that he, he promoted the event. He... 
he got involved in the socials he came to the party and he instantly said god i feel like one of you guys already you know Excellent. he was amazing he got up he played a fantastic set and he didn't just disappear off the face of the earth after that he carried on he's he's there he's he's always talking to us and so I booked him again to play this year at um, a collaboration festival we're doing with Parklands Festival. I booked him to come and play because I like his vibe. I like what he yeah. brings to the to, to the team, and he's part of the crew. And he felt like he'd always been there. So it's kind of it's hard to answer that um, question as sort of what do I look for because it's it's a whole range of things. It's not yeah. just it's about what you feel as well as what you're looking for. Yeah. 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 So um, you mentioned the gathering, the the, the summer gathering. Um, unfortunately, I missed last year's, which is an absolute gutter. But uh, this year, I am well and truly cemented and well in. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be one of those uh, those 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 weekends where it's you just know it's going to be memorable. Um, what what got you um, making the decision to go into the kind of festival circuit? <laughs> Well, after um, um, uh, sort of a couple of uh, things that have, I'm not going to go into the details, but a couple of things that really uh, got my back up that happened in Birmingham with um, certain promoters, I um, had, um, I'll call it the year of collaborations, which was um, not last year, the year before, where I decided, right, okay, I'm gonna, just going to move, I'm going to stop trying to fight this, I'm going to stop trying to battle this, I'm just going to like drop the Birmingham from Collide and just sort of collaborate with various people, which was amazing, it was really, really good, and we did lots of different collaborations up and down the country, but it was really, really hard work. Um, really hard working with other promoters um, as well. Um, sometimes people aren't always on the same wavelength as you for whatever reason, that's fine. They're in their lane, you're in your lane. So I thought, no, this isn't, this isn't gonna work. And at that point I decided I was quitting it all. I was, I was quitting DJing, I was quitting promoting. I'd had enough. I literally had a bit, a menty B as me and Paul call it at home. Like, and we was just like, no, I've had enough put big status up on Facebook and everything. It was all very dramatic. I'm like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. We've all been there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've been there several yeah. times. Yeah. So it was, um, and that was in the uh, September 2022. And I didn't actually even listen to techno. I couldn't even listen to it. It pissed me off that much until the February of the following year. I was that over it all. Um, and um I kind of got over my little uh, my little uh, breakdown and just thought no right okay we need to sort of get back to um doing things on your own firstly and secondly um doing things a little bit differently and i'd always wanted to do an outdoor party it was always on my radar i was always like yeah what i really want to do an outdoor party uh, in some context um, and um, I've been looking at various sites and things and they kept falling through and it, all the logistics, it was just like, oh, this is just going to be a freaking headache. Um, and then I was contacted by Spectre at PST. And PST is where we run our parties. That is our home. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, we're very lucky to have those guys um, support us from the, the start, really. And he rang and said that he had acquired a pub uh, in down in Herefordshire and um, would I like to do um, a party there as a sort of a, um, a sort of experiment, I guess, to see how it went. And yeah. we, I was like, yeah, of course, well up for it. So I obviously never done an outdoor event before. So we just said, I'll just do it for one day, see how it goes. And then, um, yeah, we'll take it from there. So we booked it in for last June the event sold out which was amazing because when an event sold sells out it's just such stress off your mind really? you don't have to so, be yeah, dealing no, with no you're gonna get get a good party vibe and all that yeah stuff. and um it was absolutely immense like ask anybody who went there it was so fucking good it was ridiculous it was the sunniest day of the year yeah. hallelujah <laughs> um and um it was we had one marquee outside and then we had the pub for sort of out after hours and it was camping on the site and the sort of the pub the pub field at the back yeah um 
uh, it was this, yeah, sunny, so hot. We had people come down from Scotland, with people from Wales, you know, people from Ireland. It was amazing. And uh, Chris Liberate, uh, just as Chris Liberate was about to go on at five o'clock, suddenly this biblical storm happened. It was just like the most mental storm you've ever seen in your life. That's like out, please. Yeah, rain, everybody rammed in the tent. So the tent was absolutely... <laughs> oh, he, he did it on fun. purpose then. <laughs> yeah. The tent was leaking all over the speakers. It was from everybody was just going, ah! and it just had this crazy, like, like storm atmosphere. Vibe. Yeah. Um, and so he was playing and it was just round. I mean, and Chris, when he came off the decks, so we went and sat out the back. So the rain had stopped by him, but <laughs> we went and sat out the back and he just squares. God, Michaela, that is literally the best party I have been to in years, oh, hands mate. down. He was like, hands out. It was just the vibe, the atmosphere, the people, like what, you know, it's we just being country, like, Chris. We really yeah, do. it was like, it's just like being at a big free party, you know, yeah. and he was, he stayed and he had the best time. And, you know, it was, it was brilliant. Um, when the music went off, at, I think it was goes off quite early outside about nine o'clock. Yeah. We're like, right, everybody in the pub. Now this pub has got like low beams, you know, it's all very like oldie, worldy, small yeah. little pub. We've got this massive stack in there. <laughs> We've got like, everybody's like ramming in. We're like, whoa, fumbling the techno out. And it was just like, we had to get one in, one out in the pub because you people just, just trying to get in through the windows. Oh my oh. God. God, I can was... rem- I can imagine like old Bezer and Maud coming in for their afternoon cream tea and cakes. No. And, uh, <laughs> uh, no, it was so met my like, banging 150 p- beat like PM techno. Steel windows, like. <laughs> and, um, it was just yeah, it was just fantastic, and um, and it was just that you know that one day, but it was just really really good. Everybody had such a pleasant time, so Amazing. we thought well why not do it again do it for yeah. two days this time <laughs> yeah yeah and uh and what happened when you put the tickets on this year uh yeah so we put the tickets on on the 2nd of december by the 10th of january they'd sold out and that's it took a bit of a risk putting them on over christmas because i see people don't really have money yeah. over christmas and and whatnot um but i thought well it'd give an opportunity for people but no they'd gone in <laughs> like yeah. three weeks i was like oh shit so um uh, then of course you have the people going oh, i didn't get a ticket i didn't get a ticket well it's yeah like, that's uh, it i'm lovely. just chat- i'm just gonna look up the summer so i can get the the, the lineup um because it is just it is next level this lineup so this year unfortunately i'm sorry if you haven't got a ticket um you're just gonna have to listen to this and weep but um there because it is literally sold out um is there going to be a handful of tickets you're going to be releasing later on or is that it you're done no that's it now we're done because we did have we increased the capacity only by a few we we can't have a massive capacity there and this is why i will never ever ever grow it because people keep saying just just grow your capacity no it is what it is this is this is what we do yeah so there it does doesn't go over 300 you see so with yeah. i've i have um i released a few day tickets but i can't there's going to literally going to be no more so unless they go on um there will be some maybe some resale i keep saying that i keep saying well, it's going to be some resales but people don't seem to be selling their tickets so hold them for love and love. yeah yeah <laughs> just keep an eye on the skittle site and if one comes available just get it because yeah, it, yeah. there won't be any more that's it now so uh eight through the ninth of june this year um the summer gathering part two in herefordshire so this is a lineup so um mr cullen date the drummer um, the absolute legend that is AP, Sarah Monument, Benji 303. They're the they're the main guys that you kind of you've got in for um, for party times this year. Um, and then uh, the next set, I, th- I would imagine these are these are kind of the collab these are the collaboration DJs um, um, that you've kind of uh, built relationships uh, relationships with over yeah. the the last um year or so so you have got now you're gonna have to bear in like bear with me because my eye doesn't work so koala tea rats on acid which is andy uh cray uh acid fairy massive massive and ben louder flipping heck mate the flex boys <laughs> yeah um, hammer tone big man in uh, in scotland brooksy uh miss mayhem mad cake course um who else have we got 
you might have, oh scouse scouse uh dj dj crinkly um I am doing do my want, best to read it. It's do you want me to read Bash. it? Yeah. If, oh, BSE, which is obviously um, the guy that uh, behind uh, Sonnets. Um, Tom Harris, uh, Jamie B, who is obviously the uh, promoter of um, Release the Kraken in Wales. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then DJ Hexen. And then um, then the, uh, the amazing... Um, uh, than the amazing uh, residents, which is yourself, of course, uh, Mark Neenan, who um, yeah. is uh, a legend in his own right. A bloke called Skira, no idea who he is. Um, Don't know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Magic, um, uh, Sinkadia, who consequently are going to be playing um, with you at the Hydraulics party, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, yeah. Paul Elemental, uh, Tegan. DK Rune, who is obviously a legend in the in the in West Midlands, um, J Tech, uh, Paulio, Hubby Paulio, um, Elucius, Audio Trader, and Matty E. Um, mate, I'm telling you what, man. If over two days, that is um, that is some sort of lineup. It really is, and um, you just know it's going to bang as well. There's not going to yeah. be uh, there's not going to be many um, many de uh, you know low points in that weekend. So uh, there's not going to be any. I'm telling no. you. And then some of the DJs on here as well, like particularly like Koala T. Now people don't know who. Probably quite a lot of people don't know who he is. Now he is a DJ. Now this sometimes happens. I very rarely get to go to an event and just party. Most of the time, I only the time I'm going out now is my own. But occasionally, I do go party. And I'll see a DJ and I'll be like, wow, it's amazing. Our quality was one of those. And uh, he's a house DJ. Mm. And um, when we went to Audio Tech last year, he was absolutely brilliant. So, uh, yeah, I come and asked him to play just because I love a bit of house. And he was really good. So he's, um, and again, he's uh, he's been really quite involved in the socials. And he was really happy to come and get involved, even though it's a, it's a techno event. So... Yeah, we do have, um, that's who he is. Um, but like with the residents, like some people go, why have you got so many residents? And it's a good, good, <laughs> good question. But all of the residents all play different styles of techno. Yeah. And quite, quite often, you know, if I get asked to be involved in an event such as Audio Tech or Parklands Festival, they want a specific kind of techno. Um, you know they they're not necessarily the you know the really hard 150 bpm stuff there you know the, the, it's it's different sort of crowd so you can you pull up pull on different residents and and say yeah okay because i like to give those those uh, these events where we get asked to come and play or or to, to host a stage i like to give those events to residents rather yeah. than guests because that's that's what you should do so we have we can draw upon don't know I have this one or this one or that one and so that's how that's come and you're all legends as well and you're all great so we are actually we, yeah. yeah yeah so when we do our residence free party um like we did last year then um it's always a yeah just an amazing party because you're all legends in your own right you're not just residents you're yeah. all superstars yeah. um yeah let's let's talk about some of these residents because i mean some of them are just like i mean yourself and Cincadia, you um you seem to have a really good synergy between the two of you when you because you you've done a few back to backs now and um it now um henry was saying on the last podcast and now it's not i know it's now uh, officially something that you can announce you're going to be in the main room in fold with Sincadia um for the fold hydraulics sorry yeah, for the hydraulics party in october aren't you yes um how how um how does that uh, in terms of you and Sincadian working together um has is that something just fell into place or are you because you because you, you, you you guys work really well together well i'll tell you a little story about me and uh, Sincadia. so um i had a gig in belfast with and henry was playing as well and um before uh we went over henry says oh i've got um a friend who um uh, doing lessons with who do you want who's going to be coming do you want to go out for dinner before the gig and i'm like yeah okay cool so henry bought uh, we came along and we met up with henry and he bought so like, yeah, deb's with him and that's how we met so it was actually henry that introduced us mm. um and on that night um me and um me and deb's just 
just hit it off. We just yeah. got on like a house on fire. We we like the same music. We've got the same attitude. We're the same age. We, we, we're dealing with the same things. And from that instant sort of meet, that first meeting, um, we really just became really solid friends. Um, and obviously I asked her then to come over and play at Clyde. Um, and the rest is history. Um, yeah, and we've, you know, we, we're very close. Um, we, we, we understand each other and we, you know, we played a back-to-back at closing for the Collide Summer Gathering last year. And we didn't, we didn't know what we, each other was going to play. We do have like, quite different styles of techno that we play. We're just like, okay, we'll just go and just have a, just go and have a mess around on the decks together. And it was absolutely brilliant. We, we were both buzzing. So yeah. When Henry asked us if we wanted to do uh, a back to back together this year at Hydraulics, jumped to the chance. I wouldn't have done it with anyone else. I'd have probably yeah. said no. And she said the same. You did it together. with me though, didn't you? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, good. so it was good. Yeah. So, um, but um, yeah, so for both of us, it's um, it, it's an amazing opportunity. I'm both, we're both really humbled and honored to be asked. Yeah, so we, so. Um, we're going to, yeah. Bring some. Uh, I don't well, know. I'm not working this year. So I will. I will be there. Um, you might have to pick me up off the dance floor. It's going to be another late one, isn't it? I think they, they usually shut the doors around ten, half ten in the morning. Um, so you've already had about twelve, twelve hours worth of partying. So, so I'm a. I'm. I'm. I. I got. I've come into a little bit of money, right? I've got like a maybe. I don't know free grand right someone's give some i've found free grand from somewhere and i've decided i want to put on a party what advice can you give me um in terms of a starting point to building a a decent party that isn't gonna end up being a complete nightmare and you having a complete meltdown with choose who you work with rule number one don't um don't just don't just pick anyone make sure if you're going to work with them do preferably do it on your own or or do it with someone that you really really trust because you can have a friendship but actually running an event with someone is a different is a different kettle of fish and you do you don't want to be fracturing relationships or anything because it can get really really stressful you've got to have your whatever your your vision is it's got to be completely aligned and the good, good thing about me and rachel is we we work together in harmony um because we are completely on the the, 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 the same wavelength and i know i mean i'm the more outspoken one of the two of us she makes just as many decisions as i do um so yeah that'll be rule number one don't just work with anyone don't do it for money because that's going to fall on its ass there's so many events out there that are that are being cancelled so many events that are being postponed so many events that have maybe tried to go too big too soon and um, are now nothing but a debt and that's the last thing you want you don't want to be lumbered with a debt um so no get your friends involved you know you don't have to have a big headliner dj in fact you know it it, it very rarely pays to have a big, massive headliner DJ. And I, I've done it myself, I can speak yeah. from experience. I've paid for a big headliner DJ and it's probably was one of the least successful events I've done. So stick with your friends, stick with the people um, who you know and who, who are happy to do it for sort of a normal fee mm. uh, to start off. Um, and just, you know, just 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 do it because you love it just don't 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 worry about what other people think don't worry about oh, oh you know you've got to you've got to be doing this you've got to be doing that you're always going to come across negativity there's always going to be people who are ready to put you down or to slag you off or to not like what you do yeah. um you know who measures your success you know is it yourself or is it other people um you know I've been called it significant. I've been told it don't matter. I've been called it's, it's you know, that my techno is not serious enough. My techno is not real. It's not this, it's not that, you know, I, I can't mix this and the other, you know, everything that could have been thrown my way. It doesn't, I don't give a shit anymore. It doesn't, it honestly doesn't bother me. I used to, I used to fight it a lot on social media. I don't anymore because yeah. as far as I'm concerned, what, what I've achieved has been a success. So, 
just well, don't. As, far just, as everybody else is concerned, it's been a success as well. So, um, I've, you know, it, hands down, you've done an absolutely fantastic job, and I don't think, I don't think um, the vibe would be the same if it wasn't um, for the work that you've put in to keep it that way. Um, you know, I've been to I've been to loads of, of, of places where um, the de the demographic gets younger and younger, and as that happens um the vibe just dilutes it just gets complete i mean i'm not saying um that uh young people don't know how to have a have a good time like us oldies <laughs> but um it, you um you do see more phones on the dance floor you do see less vibing you see a little less kind of family feel um and for me i've always come i've come from a place where do you remember our nuclear free zone uh, parties in in brixton 414 um, and all the, you know, the and the, you know, the old squat parties. Um, these were all kind of, um, these are all uh, vibes that you can't really replicate unless you have had experience in that culture from the start. Um, so it, it stands to reason that if you are younger, you're not going to be able to kind of replicate replicate that experience. So um, it, it it's uh, having that experience can sometimes be the 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 difference between having a that family vibe and then just fr doing a, a techno event, you know? I just think as well, I mean, I've, I sort of have gone full circle on this myself, but, um, you know, I see a lot of stuff on social media and it's, it's, it's out there everywhere. It's like people like sharing these videos of fake DJs or people oh, on yeah. their phones looking at DJs and whatever. And I just say, stop sharing it it's not what we're about it's not what no. we represent it doesn't matter you know uh, so, well, again if i'm being cautious i'm not going to say names a very well-known dj shared something last week saying make this make sense to me and i thought and i just replied it doesn't need to make sense to you if you're not involved in that if that's not your scene if that's not what you are all about doesn't need to make sense don't worry about it don't share it don't comment on it just just don't do anything with it do what you want to do, stay in your lane, stay in your lane, create, create your parties, what you want to achieve. And don't waste all your energy worrying about young people holding their phones to bloody whoever in Ibiza, because that's not what you're about. It doesn't matter. People get really angry about it. Like, oh, my God, you're going to put a sticker over your phones and you can't have the phone on my dance floor. It's like, bullshit, if you want to come and have your phone at collide and take a video of the dj i don't give a shit you know but i like to think i create a party where you don't want to do that well that is you know? what i was going to say is that um you there is a stip there are stipulations certain venues that are saying that you know you can't have that and for the and to be honest with you uh one particular venue in london i have um I have sat down and chatted to the owner about this very thing and it made perfect sense to me his answer um but um, it's not something I'll go into on the podcast right now. But it's, but um, you know, you've if you can if you've built yourself a um, a um, a kind of an environment where people have phones in their pockets um, and they are coming to your event for the entire evening and they barely take it out of their pocket uh, because they're just so lost in the moment. You've done your job right. Simple as that yeah i mean I, it, it's like people and it doesn't it you know what it doesn't matter at the end of the no. day let's go back to let's go back to the old days when you know we just used to go to a party and didn't really matter if it was this type of techno trance whatever whatever it was just a rave yeah no one cared and everyone was just having a good time and now it's become so pigeonholed and so you can't do this you can't do that you need to do this you need to do that you need no you don't just just live and let live c'est la vie so um talking at let's let's talk about michaela the dj um yeah. that's been uh that's been something that's been going for years and years and years um you've not just popped up on the scene you've been a, you've been absolutely smashing it for decades um but um just recently you have seen a lot more success and you've had a lot of there's i mean some of the bookings you've had recently have been you know really kind of um noteworthy tell us a little bit about um you know some of the good ones and kind of if you've got any kind of cool stories yeah, <laughs> well, I've only actually been playing <laughs> out illegal, for ten. But... Uh, no, no, I've only been playing out for ten years um, in a in a sort of a club, sort of uh, festival environment or whatever. Um, so 
I mean, I, I, I've put my, I've put my years in of playing like free parties and, and this, that, and the other. Mm. And like I say, for me, it's always just been a hobby. I do get like massive imposter syndrome. Sometimes I think, how the bloody hell oh, am I here? Know, oh yeah, how the hell am I here playing this or doing this event? And you know, I've played a Burning Man, which was amazing. Um, and um, you know, and obviously I've played it. This will be my third time playing hydraulics now, which is a massive honor. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, uh, the other events, I'm a bit more pick and choosy these days because I can't, I can't do them all because I work shifts and mm -hmm. I work weekends and my, my time off is precious. So I have to be a little bit more choosy about um, about what I can and can't do. But like I said, I've had some really good, really good um, bookings in the last couple of years, particularly com things coming up this year. So I am always, always really honoured and, and really like sometimes shocked <laughs> that I've been asked. But um, well, yeah, like I mean, the, 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 the skill that your skill level in terms of your DJ um, yeah. skill, um, you were always a good DJ from the minute I, I met you, but you're, the way that you control a crowd and handle your business in front of the decks has just gone, um, you know, in the last few years, especially. Um, is there, do you think that just comes with just you, you being comfortable in your own skin? I think I've got to a point with my DJ and where I stopped planning my sets. I think yeah. that was a real big turnaround for me because before I never had that confidence to do that. I used to plan it meticulously. Like I would sit there on record box and I would plan it all out. And, um, you know, I practice, 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 practice till it was perfect. And then of course, then what happens is you go on the dance floor and you're like, oh, shit, this is not what, this is not the right vibe yeah. or whatever. Um, and, um, it was underground alliance where i had to sacrifice my set because we lost the after party so i was like okay i won't play and as it happened at the end of the night one of the djs hadn't turned up yeah so john carlo's like go on then mick get on yeah. the decks and i'm like that's a really good night ah, yeah ah, i haven't got i haven't got anything i haven't got anything planned i've got i went up to the deck one of my memory sticks wouldn't work with all my new tunes on i was like oh shit. lucky i had a backup memory stick so i had to completely wing the whole thing mm. and i just remember looking up at one point and there was perk and dave, dave the, drummer, the drummer having a giving chat it stats yeah, no, at yeah. the back of the dance floor that, and yeah. you next you next to me I'm oh, yeah, I was, I think I'd, I'd lost people <laughs> yeah. when i was on the stage filming you i think yeah yeah and they were there <laughs> and these two people were like perk and dave the drummer who've always people have massively looked up to and really like yeah, just really, lovely really lads. inspiration to me they're giving it stacks um and then afterwards um henry came up to me and went oh, well, that was bloody good, wasn't yeah. it? And it was the first time I'd ever just done something off the cuff. So I think from that point, that's kind of the way I went. Yeah. Um, whereas I'll just I'll just get some new tunes, but get some stuff together, load in, and just go with the vibe. And I think that's probably why it sounds a bit well, probably why it's, it's it's gone the way it has. But yeah. I mean, even Jack Magic said to me after the last collide, and he's seen me play hundreds of times, yeah. um, and he said after the last collide, he was like. Make that was literally Next the level, best yeah. I've ever heard yeah. you play. Yeah. And it was, and it was a, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I wasn't, again, the last Collide, I, I didn't play at the last Collide. Um, and I, um, it, you say you talk about go, uh, nights out. I don't do nights out. I'm a bit old for that now. Um, but I cannot, uh, cannot go uh, without going to Collide. If I'm not playing it, I've got to be there. Uh, same mm -hmm. with Hydraulics. It's, they're, the, they're the two that, um, mainly because all of you lot are there <laughs> all my friends yeah. are there um everybody's there it's a it's a lovely get together but also the music is always uh, it's never planned in the way that it comes out but it feels like it's been the crescendo there's there's a you know there's a there's a, a a beautiful progression of music um last year um the guys that stood out for me was um tell the transcender um, just the, the he literally transcended his set from the big, from the very first record he played to to the last, um, mm. and and filtered in a the kind of transition of you know a harder style of DJ to kind of take over and and um, and build the night and the actual the progression of those sets were just as a, somebody on a dance floor. I mean, 
you can't beat it, man. And uh, me and AP were stood at the back of the room, just just vibing to when you were playing. You were just dropping these like these tunes, and I was just like, I need to get these tunes, man. And we would, you know, we were trying to analyze what, you know, this is this is some next level music. And then I think I sent you a message saying, can you give me your set list? And you were like, oh, they're really old. <laughs> these are like they're not. <laughs> these are just uh, just just stuff on my stick that I I like, and I just decided to play. And it's just like that to me was um it was a lesson for me because it was just like I have this uh, I had this uh, thing of. I play my own music, I do all unreleased music, but then on top of that, I've got all the promo stuff that I play that's literally just not even out, and it's like it's going in the shops that week or whatever, and so I have to kind of, um, I have to play that kind of stuff, but um, it was like an eye, eye opener to me. It's just like, if you want to play stuff that's like, you know, 15 years old, if it's a banger, it's a banger, man. Play it. Yeah. It worked yeah. really well. It really, I've really enjoyed it. No, thank you. Really <laughs> yeah, um, thank right, you. so uh, as is uh, customary with um, these interviews, we have run out of time. But, um, mate, thank you for coming and joining me. Uh, you've, um, oh, I know me. you're really busy and I know you've got you literally got a million things to do, but um, I just really appreciate you coming and taking the time out. And I know that people watching this are going to get massive value from it. So, um, yeah. Thanks, man. We love you. Oh, love you, you too, mate. Much love. And, uh, <laughs> thanks thanks for asking me. Oh, mate. No.